Meeting stereotype, I want to put a fine point on this. You know, there's this insider and outsider. And I would imagine that after all of the research they did, those top five candidates were all probably pretty qualified for the job. Is that a fair assessment? When you get to the top five, you probably, you probably could do the job. No, I absolutely, I asked, yep. I was briefed by my co-chairs and read their memo, and I said, I want to make sure that any name you give me, because they weren't bound to five, they decided to send five. Right. Um, but the charter requires me to choose from a competitive examination of three names. So for people so, out there who are asking for a redo, let's just be blunt with them. Is a redo possible? No. You know, it is, it is very tough in a process because everyone's got a favorite candidate. Mm -hmm. But if you set up a process to work and it works how it's supposed to work, the fact that one particular candidate, no matter how loved they are, doesn't make it, you don't have a redo. I've had calls from people in, in Texas wondering why that person didn't make mm -hmm. it and shouldn't I look at him closer. So I think we have to really look at, that's why I spend time talking about the process. I think the public has to understand what we did, how we got there, and I will make the decision moving forward. I hope that one of these three names, you know, there's some chance that none of those names meet what I think we need as a police, and then we would start over. Or they don't want the job after all the drama. Can you see that happening? I they think, say, no, thank you. You know, we've had that happen before. Yeah. The last time there was a police search, people dropped out because they thought that there was too much Seattle process. <laughs> but look, if you're applying at a job at this level, you better have thought of that up front. Yeah. And if you can't work with community and understand that decisions like this are very emotional for people, and people, I have deep respect for people like Harriet Walden, who has worked for decades in this city for police reform. I worked with her when I was U.S. attorney. I know she comes from a place of deep caring, not just for Carmen Best, for the city. And I'm going to listen to her. And I know she's upset, and I'm going to listen. Um, but at the end of the day, when you set up a process, you have to let it work. Yeah, and it's hard when you have someone who's dedicated so much of their life to a city, uh, is so well respected, and you have someone tell them you're an insider, you've dedicated too much time to the city, so you can't have this. And I want to be very I think clear. That's the frustration. That was the opinion of one person. Tim Burgess, who Tim, answered my question right. that way. But, but if you look at the memo they wrote, there was a range of issues yeah. they were looking at, that it wasn't just insider, outsider. Again, if I had wanted to close it to internal candidates, I could have. We had multiple people apply from within the department. Carmen Best made it to the top five. She should be incredibly proud of that. She is a really good police officer. She is a great chief right now. She and I have been focused, you know, when we talked over the weekend, it wasn't about this. It was about how do we have better policing in some parts of our city who need better policing. We had a couple of shootings over the weekend. Were those indications that we need to have different crime enforcement strategies? She is working for public safety every day of her life. And I, well, we'll wrap up here. I hope she stays. Uh, I hope she stays because she's I do a too. good cop. People have respect for her. I doubt that she will, but I do hope she stays on the homeless. She just told quick. me she would. She now, says she will she, stay. She's got to assess this. Look, she's got, um, uh, she's an incredibly dynamic person. Yeah. I think, you know, she could be stolen from us, but she is committed to the city. She's committed to this department. She said she will stay. And she right now is focused, as she said, I don't want to focus on drama. I want to focus on public safety and serving the community. That sounds like Carmen Bass. Yeah. Um, uh, Mayor Jenny Drake, we appreciate you being here on the homeless front. We wish you well. Uh, anything we can do in the press, I don't know what we can do. We want you to be successful. We want to fix the crisis. We do still want to hold you accountable. Um, but I hope that this plan works. I hope we get people It's part streets, of a plan, so. and I think the important thing I want people to know is we need everyone to say, for example, as we're citing these tiny home villages, to listen. And to listen from people in Ballard and Inner Bay and Whittier Heights where, where communities come together. And if we can do it better, we'll do it better. But we're all in this together. There's no solution without all of us. All right, Mayor Jenny Durkin, thank, thank you for so being much. here. No, thank so you. so much time, way more time than we had planned on, but we appreciate you talking about two critically important issues with us. Thanks so uh, much. MJ, we're going to get to check weather. Well,